episode of SBJ I Factor is presented by Blessings in a Backpack and Winstead. I'm John Aran, SBJ's media writer. On today's edition of SBJ I Factor, I talk with Andrea Marini from his home in Italy. Andrea is a 40 under 40 winner last year and one of the top executives at Delta Tray that provides the technology that allows companies to broadcast or stream their events. Welcome to SBJ I Factor. We're here with Andrea Marini of uh, Delta Tray, Deputy CEO and Chief Commercial Officer of Delta Tray. Andrea, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me today. It is a pleasure. And you are talking to us from Italy, the home of the uh, European champions, uh, Italy. Where do you watch your game? Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. We are uh, we are still celebrating, and uh, I just watch it. Uh, I just watch it at home. But uh, we are we are very happy, and uh, it's been it's been a great moment. The celebrations have been going on all week. I bet. Oh yeah, and they will continue uh, probably until the next Euro, I guess. Andre, for the I Factor, we want to talk about sort of your how you grew up, your your youth. Uh, where did you grow up? I was born in Milan, uh, and then uh, uh, I let's say grow up uh, in uh, in Torino. That uh, is the city where uh, where I am now, and where uh, our our company was uh, was founded. Uh, and then I um, I study in the university and the master degree abroad in uh, in the UK and uh, and uh, in France in Paris. So, how would you say your upbringing influenced your your career path? I was lucky enough to grow up in a um, in a family of uh, of entrepreneur, and I saw my my father uh, building the business uh, every day when he was not traveling and he was at home. Um, the company Delta Tre is um, uh, thirty five years old. I'm thirty five years old. I think the company was founded in uh, January uh, nineteen eighty six, and I'm from April nineteen eighty six. So it's like uh, it's like a sister, and uh, I literally grow up uh, grow up uh, inside inside it then uh, when i was a kid uh, i wanted to do what my father was was doing without uh, even knowing what he really was so while some kids were uh, wanted to do i don't know the formula 1 pilots or the astronaut i wanted uh, i wanted to to work for uh, for delta track it was something it's sort of the family business it's something you've always wanted to do was there one aha moment that you had that that you were you, you saw what your father was doing and you wanted to follow him? Do you do you recall that? Yes, I recall uh, an episode. So during my 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 master studies, I I did an experience in um, in uh, investment banking in M and A, um, and I was uh, uh, twenty one, maybe twenty two. I don't remember exactly. And uh, uh, they were paying me some good money for for that age, and the job was very very interesting in London. And um, at a certain point, I thought that uh, investment banking might might have been my my future, what what I wanted to do. And then one uh, one night, I was working with one of my bosses at the time, um, a very very nice uh, uh, Spanish guy. And uh, we were late at night working on a pitch. And uh, at a certain point, he told me, "Look, you." You should really consider working your family business. It's a great business, great industry. And uh, I remember in the in the days uh, after uh, uh, thinking about it and then uh, processing all of it and then uh, wanting to to go back uh, home. I would say. And so, how did you do that? Uh, did, did, was it as simple as picking up the phone and talking to your father, or uh, like, how, how did you get started in that? In that. So there's been two. Um, moments slash three one um, one of um, the advantages that I had is that uh, um, when I was a kid uh, I I was going with um, with my father to many events and I was seeing them working in the in the background so I don't know I went to several uh, Formula One or MotoGP events that we were covering at the time uh, ski soccer and all the rest so um, I sort of um, saw and learned a little bit of the background of the, of the operation on the field that uh, um, is still very useful uh, today. Then I, um, I was doing the, the spotter. I was gathering data when I was uh, at the university. So I was working as a, a freelance for Delta Tre going to the stadium. I think my first job was uh, uh, Euro 2004. 
in Portugal, my first job for Delta 3. Then I continue my study and uh, and one day they um, they call me and they say, look, uh, if you, you, you can keep doing what you're doing, but if you want to um, uh, join Delta 3, this is the right moment. We have some openings that uh, could fit your profile and, uh, and, then, uh, and then I started. I would imagine going to a Formula One races, going to the European Championships, uh, seeing that, that that made working at Delta Dre very attractive for you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. And also you see, you know, you, you what was really early days, there was no, there was no internet, but you see uh, what these guys are doing, then going in, uh, in, uh, in TV, you see the athletes uh, uh, at a few meters uh, from you. So yes, yes, it was, it was really nice, yeah. During your early career path, what was the biggest risk that you took? I would say when um, when I joined Delta 3, we were uh, uh, very much um, European focused uh, business. So uh, offices in Europe, uh, most of the clients in Europe. Then we were already uh, working for um, in international uh, events, but most of the business was in, was in Europe. And uh, when um, when I joined Delta 3, Instead of uh, uh, staying, let's say, in, in my comfort zone with people that uh, I knew uh, very well, that were client of us since uh, since forever, I decided and uh, and, they, and they let me do it. To, to be honest, uh, um, to to go in uh, in Asia and try to expand the business uh, um, on on the other side of the world. So probably that was the biggest bet uh, of my of my early career. Yes. Let's talk about uh, management. Yeah. How would you describe your management style? I like to I like to operate with a, a very flat uh, structure, trying to create a, a friendly environment, uh, making people feel uh, feel uh, feel comfortable, and um, I like to to empower people uh, as much as I can. I I, I learn. Uh, already during the high school and the university, the importance of uh, of your team, and so I I rely a lot on uh, on the people that are working with me with me every day. Andre, uh, do you have a specific example of a, a leadership challenge that you had that you were able to use that strategy to uh, to, to make it work out? I would say I don't have. Uh... A specific example, uh, a specific example, no. But we we have been obviously as a um, as every business through uh, tough moments, uh, and um, I think we have been able always to uh, come out in a in a very solid and uh, um, reliable way. And uh, the way we operate as a business, uh, always very transparent, uh, open. Uh, uh, in a let's say friendly way, I think made uh, made uh, made the difference uh, in those kind of situations. Who are some other leaders that that you admire, either in business or outside of business? Okay, this this is a tricky one. So uh, I will say that uh, the people that had more influence of me and has, of me has been uh, uh, for sure my father, uh, especially in uh, in the in the early days. Uh, the, um, the the other co-founder co of, uh, of Delta Trade that is still our uh, our um, our CEO uh, GP um, obviously is the is the person that uh, I um, confront myself with uh, on a day by day basis. So he has um, he has a lot of influence on me. And then uh, you you probably know, but the our um, our main investor is uh, is Bruin uh, is Bruin Capital, and um, uh, I've been very lucky. When uh, when they acquire um, Delta 3, I moved uh, to to the US for uh, a little bit more than four years, and I spent a lot of time uh, with uh, with George uh, Pine, the the founder, and um, he he taught me a lot on on obviously on the US, but also on uh, on management style. So I will say these are the three uh, figures that uh, have had most influence on me. And then, uh, to, to be honest, I've been really lucky to be exposed to a lot of um, very good uh, managers uh, in uh, in my in my life, and I always try to um, learn a little bit from uh, from from everyone. So I, I think a mix of people had had influence of me. Can you identify the common traits that those people had and that made them successful? 
So I will say the team, as I was saying before, uh, strong team uh, supporting them. You cannot be, you cannot be very good at everything that you do. So you need to you need to rely on uh, on uh, on other people. Um, listen uh, to to everyone and uh, value the opinion of uh, of everyone uh, of everyone around you. I I can give you an example. I remember when. Uh, when I first moved to the US, I was surprised that um, uh, George was always asking to everyone in the room, uh, uh, do you have something to add? What is your opinion? And uh, I think that's uh, a commonality that I've seen in many of, uh, of the leaders I've been uh, working with. Integrity, transparency, honesty. We are, uh, we are a people business. We, we rely on, uh, on relationships. So uh, people do business with people. You, ne you need to be credible and reliable. Uh, strong communication and uh, I would say the vision, having a, a strong vision and uh, execute against it. Now, Andrea, one of my favorite topics for these types of interviews always deals with hiring. I feel like hiring, hiring good people is a lengthy process. It's, a, it's one of the most difficult things that I've always encountered in my career. You have an opening at Delta Tray. How do you go about filling that op opening? I just said it. We are we are a people business. I mean, we, we are a tech company, obviously, but uh, people uh, is uh, is what makes the difference. We we consider Delta Tre a, a family, and we try to stick to to our values. Um, we do a lot of different things, so we at the end uh, look for uh, uh, very talented people, but also very diverse people. Uh, um, we, we need a mix of uh, um, skill and expertise uh, from all around the world, the different culture to uh, to deliver what, what what our services every day. So these are are the fundamental uh, are the fundamental uh, elements. We 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 don't have uh, fixed uh, um, things that we look into people, but we look at uh, talented people, mix of culture. We need uh, a lot of diversity and uh, and mix of uh, of skill. So we. Uh, I think we have more than 50 nationalities in uh, in Delta Tre. We have a very nice uh, mix of um, mix of uh, of family in in our company. With so, uh, so many different nationalities, so many different offices uh, at Delta Tre, how do you fi find those people? How, how how do you how do you identify the people that you even want to interview to to come in? So we have a very very good uh, talent acquisition team. Uh, very good. They uh, make uh, um, an amazing job. Our uh, HR uh, HR department is a is a is a small team, but is uh, is incredibly effective. And uh, they are uh, they are able to hire and find uh, people uh, all around the world. I will say um, in in an incredible incredible effective way. Then obviously we all also. Uh, rely in uh, in some geographies on uh, on um, other companies that do the do hiring, but uh, we have uh, uh, I would say one hundred percent of the hirings are done by by our team. Let's go in into business a little bit. You're in, in the middle of a you know tough negotiation. How would you describe your negotiating style? Uh, <laughs> I try to be again as uh, transparent uh, and uh, and honest. As possible, uh, I try to be calm. I'm not a very calm person usually. I am very competitive, but when I'm uh, negotiating, uh, I learn. Uh, I learn to stay calm and uh, always never go with high tones uh, or, or or whatever. Um, again, I rely as much as I can on on, on my team to make sure we make uh, we make the right uh, we make the right uh, choices. But I will say, Trump, uh, transparency always been uh, always been direct and uh, and trying to be trying to be uh, comfortable in 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 the elements that we have. I say, let's say you're in the middle of a negotiation. It's not going well. How do you handle that? We try to. Take a little bit of time to regroup uh, and uh, and think about the next uh, the next move. Uh, I learned that impulsive decisions are uh, are never good. Uh, so I would say we we try to take a step back, look at all the elements, and then uh, and then go back uh, to to the negotiation. We are we are lucky if you want because it's very rare in our business that. Uh, 
a negotiation is really live, you know, you know what I mean, like a live bargain. Uh, so we usually have a little bit of time uh, to reflect. On the other end, uh, I'm I, I'm Italian. I think we are a good uh, negotiate uh, population of uh, of negotiators. So we do it we do it every day. But no jokes uh, jokes aside, um, always try to to be calm, be uh, look at the elements, and try to take uh, um, informed decisions. Andrea, everybody that's been in business has had a misstep, has uh, had a failure. Uh, what has been your best failure? What's a failure that you learn from the most? A few years ago, we had a couple of, uh, of difficult moments with, uh, with some of the platforms uh, we, were, uh, we were running um, in the very early days of, uh, of streaming, where um, you, you know, if you do a mistake in live sport, uh, everyone is going to see it. Uh, so probably those moments have been the most challenging one. And uh, the lesson is what I was saying before is... Uh, not really the problem that you have or the mistake, but is how you react to it, how, how, how effective you are in, in uh, going back, back uh, to, the, to the right path and uh, um, erase your mistake and uh, learn from it. And I think we did it uh, uh, really, really well uh, as a business. Let's go back to the moment that you joined Delta Tray. If you, if you joined Delta Tray with the knowledge that you have now, what would you do differently? I will try to focus uh, on uh, less things and do them better. You know, when uh, when you are uh, young, I'm 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 still young, but when you are very young, you are incredibly motivated and uh, uh, you try to do a lot of things. Uh, and uh, many of these things uh, are uh, are at the end a waste of time. You learn from them, but uh, uh, are a waste of time. So I will say that. Uh, if I could go back, uh, I will try to focus on some key action, some key elements, uh, some key battles, if you want, uh, and uh, try to win them and uh, put all my efforts on, on those. When you're younger, you have a lot more energy, for certain. Yeah, you have a lot of more energy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's find out a, a little about your, your, you personally. What do you do? How do you get away from it all? You mean in general in my free time? Yeah. Uh, I play golf uh, as much as I can. I'm, I, I love it. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not playing well uh, lately, but uh, I, I really like to play with friends. Uh, is, um, is the best way for me to, to relax. Andrea, have, what's, what's your handicap? Uh, five, five. That's, that's five. playing pretty well to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm not playing it, but I, I used to play well. I used to play well, yeah. And uh, it's also a good way to uh, of doing business, uh, a nice uh, golf round. So sometimes I can mix. Uh, I can mix the two. Um, I have a wonderful wife. Uh, I have um, I have a daughter that is three. Uh, uh, a son coming next week, so I think it's gonna keep me busy for for a little bit. So I try to spend a little bit, uh, a, a little bit as much time as I can with them, and also. Uh, Thanks to the pandemic, uh, lately I spent uh, more time than in the last uh, uh, five or six years. So I'm very, very happy about it. Friends, um, I like food, I like wine, uh, I like cars, unfortunately. So those are the main things. I, I do a lot of sport. So sport is the, is the best way for me to, to relax. Food, wine, cars. You sound like a, a perfect Italian to me, Andrea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm an Italian cliche. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, you also buried the lead. Congratulations. You have a, a, son, a son coming next week. A son coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Second, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Next, next week. Literally next week. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the industry. Yeah. The, the sports industry needs to do a better job of... Uh, I would say I go back to to the point we were making before, uh, uh, inclusion and diversity. We are uh, putting a lot of effort on it uh, uh, as Delta 3 is uh, at the center of uh, a lot of the initiative that, that you are doing it uh, as, a, as a global com company with, uh, with uh, such a variety of, of, uh, of culture. Um, and then um, probably uh, educating a little bit uh, uh, more the, um, the, the young people, if they want to do um, an executive career in sport, uh, 
uh, is uh, is not that easy. You know, if you want to do the banker, or if you want to do the consultant or uh, marketing, you you know more or less where to go. Uh, sport uh, is an incredibly attractive uh, industry with an incredible potential. So maybe putting a little bit uh, more effort in uh, in uh, a link to the education will be will be very good. What's the best career advice that you've given? That I've given uh, to don't be afraid to to make mistakes. Uh, again, to listen to people because uh, I was not really listening to people when uh, again when I was younger. So I learned uh, I learned from it. And uh, no, really, I, I will say, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Everyone, uh, everyone is uh, is making them uh, learn from it, uh, and uh, uh, and do your best. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's always some good career advice that I always try to impart to people as well. Andrea, thank you very much for joining the SBJ I Factor. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have- Thanks for joining SBJ iFactor today. Remember to subscribe to SBJ iFactor wherever you listen to your podcasts and listen to our future episodes that will hit every two weeks. If you're looking to get more involved in your community, engage in your team's fan base, or provide volunteer opportunities to your staff or teammates, be sure to check out Blessings in a Backpack. Blessings in a Backpack is a nonprofit organization that provides bags of ready to eat food to children on Fridays so they have food over the weekend when there is no school breakfast or lunch. Join the likes of Trey Mancini, Lamar Jackson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Justin Rose, and countless other professional athletes, teams, and organizations helping provide hunger free weekends to children across the United States. To learn more and join the team, visit blessingsinabackpack.org. That's blessingsinabackpack.org.